My ideas on leadership and values and culture are all kind of woven together. Leadership complements management skills. Management skills are analytic, they're skills of the brain. And leadership is all around inspiring the heart. People don't care what you know unless they know that you care. The essence of it is, you believe in me, I believe in you, we're gonna do this together, we'll sacrifice. Dan and Tom both are better leaders because the other one was there. It seemed to me that, that the whole history of the company was just shot through with what they had accomplished. To the extent a company can have a soul, I, I, I think they imbued NetApp with that. But I'll tell you what every great leader accomplishes. People come through because they don't want to let them down. They're not afraid, they're not intimidated, they simply don't want to let you down. And that's what my father did for me. I was uh, smaller than the other kids, and yet uh, he made me believe I could do almost anything. You know, he showed up for every one of my Little League games, every single one. I didn't realize the influence of that until I got to college and the fact that he was just there. You know, he was a terrific father and role model and things like that. You know, he was on the uh, fresh produce packaging side of General Foods, Bird's Eye Division. And I remember he walked the factory every day. He wasn't even running the plant. And yet he felt as though, you know, there was no reason why he shouldn't be on a first name basis with everybody in the organization. And so philosophically, you know, it just kind of set a model. Uh, I remember I asked him, why, you know, why don't you have people call you Mr. Warmerhill? And he says, because my name is Pete. Uh, and you'll notice my email is Dan. <laughs> it's Dan at NetApp. Actually, I decided to be a CEO, I think, when I was a senior in high school. I really got enamored with the computer industry at that time, and I expected it to be a big company. I expected it to be a Fortune 500 company, but I never, never ever anticipated I would build one kind of from scratch. The reason I've done three startups, and the reason I get excited by them, and I got to hire people who make other people dream with them, and I got to find customers who are willing to bet on me and the company I'm representing. And that, to me, is an absolutely tremendous opportunity, and it all starts with sales. It was interesting to watch how Dan and Tom got to know each other as they joined. Tom started about six months before Dan, and we were so little that we didn't have a lot of, of basic processes for things. Dan understood that our technology was in pretty good shape, but we didn't have a very good selling strategy. He called me, I, was, I lived in Dallas, Texas, and he said, Tom, you're gonna be my Emmett Smith. So I'm gonna hand you the ball until you just can't run with it anymore, okay? Because we need to sell. It's the first time in my career that I really felt from the very top of a company where somebody says, we believe in you, take the ball and run. We basically set our sights on uh, building a new market category that we would lead. It was called Network Attached Store. And that we would double every year for five years. We had just gone from uh, 15 million to 43 to 90, in that range. And all of a sudden it said we were gonna be a billion dollars in five years. You know, we said we have to make bigger bets. We did 500 and a billion. And I guarantee you, if we'd set that goal seven, we would have done seven. I often get asked, did you ever think NetApp would be this successful? I said, no, <laughs> let's be serious. But I always believe we'd build something we'd be proud of the rest of our lives. How do you enable innovation? And when I look at, at Dan and Tom, both of them have a characteristic that they're very interested in describing the big picture and describing the problem. And their goal is to let the employees figure out what that might mean to solve it. You figure out how you achieve that goal. We're not gonna tell you. Here's the goal, you go do it. Call if you need help. We made sure that in the background, it was very collaborative, and we made sure there's a high degree of integrity in the operation around it. You know, innovation is like a flow, it's like a river. If you don't screw up the sources and uh, you don't dam it up at some point, you'll get it. I believe if someone takes a risk or they try to innovate and we, we make a bet and it doesn't work, but they attacked it with passion and integrity, got the most out of it, you gotta make something, sure something very visible and public some good happens to them. Then the next person says, I want to take a risk. A company is, com is comprised of the people who work there and, and pursue a goal together. And it's this will to win that I think uh, really drives us every day. We don't define our business by what we did yesterday. We define our business by what we're trying to do tomorrow. We're a co company that constantly dreams big. Everything NetApp has done to date means nothing for the future unless we capitalize on it and take advantage. It's a new game. Embracing change is key to what we do, and a simple way of doing that every day we end our meetings with, what are we gonna do better? What are we gonna get better at? What does it take to, to build a company with the right culture? And the foundation of that is values. Culture is values plus behavior. Honesty and a, a belief in cooperation and teamwork. Here I had an opportunity from day one to set up a culture where people are gonna act with respect, they're gonna care a lot, they're gonna sacrifice for our customers and our own company. And Dan joined it and we were in 
in lockstep on that. And so we have one value around simplicity, minimize bureaucracy, allow people to, to work as efficiently as possible and minimize the amount of controls. That's balanced with trust and integrity. We trust that you, know, you will do the right thing. Our connection with the people we have is a big piece of our success. So I wanted from day one, if people give me their heart and souls, and I believe they would right from day one, I want to make sure that they know we care. What I'm proudest of is as we sit here today, 2009, that our customers, everywhere I go in the world, they talk to me about our people much more than our products. Everywhere. Number two, our own people are passionate for this company. You know, rank number one is the great place to work for our fortune. I, I think is, personally for me anyway, kind of the, the crowning glory of my career. And I don't mean to say I did it alone. It was such an honor that, uh, you know, I, I, just, I just sat there and looked at it. <laughs> I became almost paralyzed by the concept that we actually had achieved uh, one of the, you know, the highest rankings uh, that we had set out to achieve. My goal is to change someone's life. If we've really set up a great company, we're bringing people together for good things, we're trying to do well at business, and hopefully it empowers them to do other things. But the real measurement to me is what do they do with that power? What, what are they doing that's making this world a better place? If we do a good job, we'll be proud for a long time. I personally want to be remembered as, uh, as somebody of uh, extremely high integrity, of, uh, you know, uh, aggressive in a business sense, but uh, always uh, considerate in a personal sense. I want to have a reputation as somebody that built a great company, set it on the right course, but more importantly, uh, was a terrific mentor for others. That's the kind of reputation I like to have when I, when I you know, 20 years from now, and people ask who the hell is Warmerhoven? You know? <laughs>